Hi friends, welcome back to the Pragmatic Lupa. There might be many of you who are into online shopping, but I am yet to be there, especially when it comes to clothing. As you must be knowing, once you scroll through such online sites, you keep getting similar ads on your social media feed. And that's exactly what happened with me. I was looking for a navy blue gown to twin with my husband's blazer for the new year celebration. Fortunately or unfortunately, that you guys can decide at the end of this video. But this random ad popped up on my Insta's feed. And as I did not want to spend much on my attire, so decided to give this a try. To begin with as a trial, I did not want to bet on something very expensive. So ordered it for Rs. 1800 from this Punaya site. On this site, you can see the picture of an amazing gown with a beautiful mirror work which added a cow neck in front and kept hanging at the back to give it a princess kind of look. Nevertheless, as it finally got delivered, you all can see here I got this cheap transparent net dupatta along with this kind of oversized gown which is quite disappointing. Neither I wanted to go through the return policies nor I had enough days left to search and get another one before new year. As it had lot of scope of improvement, thought of upgrading the gown using some of my creativity. So let's see how I went ahead with it. First of all, before judging my work, let me inform you I had no clue what I was about to do. So I kept changing my ideas throughout the transformation process, as and when it was needed. Nothing pre-planned, it's more of a trial and error work. But few things I always kept in mind. Time was a major limiting factor, so I wanted it to be a quick and easy job. Did not want to spend much on this, so it must be frugal by all means. Used everyday use stuff which I already had at home. So in short for me, this upgradation was absolutely free. I wanted to show you all a before and after pic of this gown. But what you are seeing here is actually not the before clip. As the bottom was in this form earlier when I got it. Only after I got buckram stitched to it and covered it up with same color fall which we generally use at the bottom and behind sari borders, I decided to film the upgradation just for you guys. So this step is missing. But it's a simple thing. Let me explain. Depending on the flare of gown, buy buckram accordingly. For this gown, I bought 1 meter buckram which I cut in the width of 6 inches strip and stitched along with the fall. This one required two falls to cover the buckram at the bottom of the gown. You can get it from any local fabric store. This is a buckram which is firm to touch. Do not worry about the buckram to be seen as anyways this buckram will be inside and won't be visible outside. I do not own a sewing machine and hand stitching would have consumed time and as I mentioned before about the time being the limiting factor so got it stitched from my aunt. You can get it stitched from any local tailor just for a few bucks as the flare border is curved and not flat so make sure while stitching you have to tuck a bit of material to go around in a curved fashion. As mentioned before I wanted to use stuffs I already have at home so I bought this bunch of white crochet lace from Mumbai which was lying at my craft section since ages. This one from Dollar Store US. These laces are leftovers from previous DIY projects. You can get any such laces and beads from your local craft stores. Later you can see I will be using only few of these. First decided to open up the center stitch. I use these pointy scissors, don't know exactly what are they called. You can use anything pointy for that matter to fit in the lace vertically. Lay it down lengthwise and cut it using scissors leaving almost 2 inch extra at the bottom so later you can easily fold it behind to fix it. Now gradually keep opening up the stitch and lay the lace overlapping a bit from top as it's obvious the more we go up the width of gown decreases so overlapping is necessary. 
as I wasn't still sure of the placement, temporarily fixed it using safety pins. Like the bottom, left 2 inch of extra lace at the top as well to be on the safer side. So later on you can fix them permanently. Make sure the overlapping of lace at the top is even at every point while leaving almost equal gaps of triangles of the gown at the bottom. I did not literally measure using measuring tape, just eyeball the gaps. Keep repeating the process till you have covered the entire circumference of the gown. So at the end, before heading to permanently fix it, this is how it will look. Now after removing the safety pins, as sewing all these to fix would have been time consuming, so used hot glue gun to stick the lace onto the fabric. Work in small portions so that glue doesn't dry out. Glue the 2 inch extra lace I left before at lower end as well but not the upper 2 inch of lace for safer side as I am not yet sure of which pattern I would go for. So carefully glue all the lace to the gown. Once it's completely done, this is how it looks. This gown's pattern has only one shoulder which is broad. So to make it thinner, I made few such small pleats. This way, gradually you pleat them, pinch the pleats and score the folds on the fabric. So in case it slips off, you know where exactly you have pleated before to pleat again. Next to set the pleats in place, I sewed using needle and thread. In case you do not want to sew, you can fix the pleats using hot glue gun. But trust me. This sewing is quite easy. Just insert the needle to and fro through the fabric but close by along the folds we pleated and up to the length you desire. I did maintain the pleats with stitches up to 4 inches on either side front and back from the center stitch. Look how sleek and neat it looks now. Quite a unique look. Now you'll have two separate pieces of gown. To use it as a gown with a twist, you can even add different kind of laces to connect both the pieces. But instead of wearing as a gown, I thought of giving another twist by wearing it as lehenga or long skirt with a crop top. But to fit this waist to my waist size, would call for reducing it. You can do it by various means such as by simply folding it up to the desired size or by using an elastic band. In either case, the pattern formed by these lace would be disrupted. So to avoid this, I needed a lining. And an instant solution commonly available at Indian household is petticoat. As it has these drawstrings which can be easily pulled or any underskirt would do. As this blue is too bright and I did not have the exact color, I considered this black which would almost be invisible at New Year's Eve midnight party. Carefully insert it underneath the skirt. You can see here, now by only pulling the drawstrings, you can fit the skirt without disrupting the lace pattern. Now it's the time to fold the extra upper 2 inch of lace. Hope you can see I'm not folding the gown's fabric which would otherwise have shortened the length of gown. It's only the extra 2 inch of lace I left earlier that is folded and sewed to the petticoat. This time too it's the same to and fro stitch through the fabric as we did to our crop top shoulder. But make sure while sewing you do not include the drawstrings of petticoat else you won't be able to pull it to tighten the waist of skirt. So at the end, see how neat it looks. Now use this lace at the borders of the top, either hot glue it or like me sew with regular to and fro running stitch as shown before. At this point I realized due to winter I might not be able to carry it as skirt and crop top so I wanted to continue it as a gown with few more upgradation. First is to join both the top and skirt together but before that make sure you tighten the top from the side. As you can see here initially it was almost 2 inches loose so continue with regular 2 and fro running 
one stitch starting with 2 inches at the top and gradually taper it down as you go towards the center stitch almost in the shape of a triangle with base towards up. Now sew together the top and skirt, cover and sew the center stitch with the same lace we used at the borders of this top. Sorry folks, few video clips got deleted by mistake. So can't show you how I did it but trust me, it's the same to and fro regular running stitch you saw earlier. Even though this time I'm not wearing it as a skirt and top, let me show you how this petticoat can help tighten the waist by pulling the drawstrings in case one wants to wear it as a skirt and top. Now lay the lace flat and this way simply twirl the lace and work in small section in a go. Once you are happy with the look of the flower, either hot glue the flower together or like me neatly sew the fabric petals of the flower. Place the flower near the gown shoulder and temporarily fix it using safety pins for two reasons. One, it can be easily adjusted in case I need to change the placement after wearing the gown. Another is when on some other occasion I'll wear it as lehenga or a skirt and top, I can easily take this off and try few other floral arrangements. If you are interested on how I made these flowers, let me know. I will show you in another video. Inside out, this is the final outcome. As much as I loved creating this new look, I hope you guys too enjoyed watching this upgradation step by step. If so, don't forget to like, share and sub. You can follow me on my social media, links are provided in the description box as well. You can check out other interesting videos on my channel. So stay tuned for more such creativity. Thank you so much for stopping by. Stay happy and positive.